Hey everybody, how's it going? Our house 21 here, and this is going to be a quick one. And I always say that, but this time it really will be. It really, really will be. Okay, but this time I'm just going to do a really quick mini review of the new line of Castle Censored Motors. So these guys are awesome. Uh, and I haven't actually put one in my cars yet. I just got these, I just did the unboxing, and I'm excited besides myself. But very soon you're gonna see these guys being implanted in pretty much my entire fleet. So, um, and I've got some some schemes and some things I've got working up, but you'll get to see that here shortly. But basically, you know, Castle has sent me a variety of motors to test for, for some different purposes. So here you'll see I've got two different types of 1410 motors. So we actually have the 1410 censored with the standard shaft. We also have a 1410 censored with the five millimeter shaft. And the other thing here, so not only do they just put the five millimeter shaft on front, it's also an extended shaft. So you can see right here, you get a lot more beef on that guy and it gives you a little bit more throw so that you have a lot more options for your gearing with this. So, but in addition, you also have over here, they sent me some A scale motors, a 1512 2600 KV sensored motor and a 1515 2200 KV sensored motor. Now the reason why they sent me these guys is because well, specifically, I did a video a while back focusing on this guy, and I have it surrounded by authentic castle motors, but this guy is, you know, this is the fake, the counterfeit, the faux castle. So there have been a lot of guys out there putting these guys in motor, or spinning these guys in their cars, and actually getting some not bad results with them. So, but some of them have actually gone as far as to say that these guys are as good as a legitimate castle. So Castle does not agree with that assessment. And not only do they not agree with that, they were willing to put their money where their mouth was. So they sent me a real 15, 12, 2600 KV motor. So basically this guy has the, is the same on paper as this guy. So I'm gonna be doing a detailed comparison between the real and the counterfeit 1512 motors and putting these guys on a test rig to actually compare them for power output, how much heat they generate, and the whole nine yards. So this is gonna be you know, a pretty definitive benchmark to say, how does a real castle motor compare against some of the counterfeits? So look for that coming up, it's gonna be pretty awesome. But also just as comparison, they sent me a 1515, so I can just compare the differences in capability of that motor versus this motor. So this is gonna be cool. I'm still kind of formulating exactly everything I'm gonna be doing with these guys, but whatever it is, it's gonna be pretty cool. But just kind of focusing in some differences with these new sensored motors. So what is a sensored motor? So brushless motors are unique in that but for a standard brushed motor that most of the RC guys are familiar with, you only have two cables and you either put watt power on it, positive polarity or negative polarity, and then the thing spins counterclockwise or clockwise. Both the smallers are different because they actually have three wires. So the first question is, how do you make a motor spin with three different wires? Well, I'll splice in a diagram, but basically inside of this motor, you have a rotor that has, a, a, these are four pole motors, so you have a magnet a circular magnet that has two north and two south poles inside of them. And they also have a set of coils. So in order to make this guy turn, the speed controllers actually have to connect these three wires in different combinations in, uh, in in a certain order to get the motor to spin in the right direction. The problem with these guys is at any given moment when the motor stops, the ESC, the speed controller, has no way of knowing where this rotor is positioned. So it doesn't know if the rotor is in this position or that position. So a brushless motor actually has to send 
a combination of signals to its three wires in order to get the rotor to move. The ESC has to send a special combination, a special pattern to the rotor or to the coils in order to get this rotor to start to move. And then it monitors a signal called the back, EM, back EMF, which is basically a little electrical pulse that happens as the motor, as the rotor passes by the coils inside. So the ESC looks at that signal or looks for that signal on the wires and can detect where this rotor is. And once it detects that signal, then it knows the right position and can start sending the right sequence of pulses to the motor to get it to move smoothly. A sensorless motor does away with all that by actually putting in a set of sensors inside the end cap of the motor. So now this guy can actually directly measure where the rotor is. And once it does that, it's able to, right from the start, from a dead start, know exactly where the rotor is and get it to move nice and smoothly. So that's going to give these new sensored motors the same smooth kind of performance characteristics you see in the brushed motors. So for the rock crawler guys, this is beautiful. But I also think that for us bashers and for even the speed runners, you know, being able to get going nice and smoothly without cogging, you know, that's going to put less wear and tear on your power system, it's going to put less wear and tear on your drivetrain. And I think it's just going to make everything work a lot better. So I cast off the castle for innovating because one of the cool features of this motor is the fact that they were able to put in the sensor hardware but keep the physical dimensions of the motors exactly the same as their sensorless counterparts. So here you have two 1410 motors, one censored and one sensorless. And as you can see, same physical dimensions, same height. They actually made the rotors, or let's just say they made the output shaft longer, which just gives you more flexibility. But overall, same dimensions, same diameter, same height. It's the same motor. However, it's not. They just took advantage of some nice packaging to put that sensor inside of here so they made a much more complex motor fit to the same physical dimensions. And here you can see they did the same thing on the A scale. So, I mean, even though the internals are different, actually you can even see the materials, this looks different anyway. But you can see this copy and this original, same size. So Castle was able to squeeze in all of the good power goodness of the of the eighth scale 15 series motors with the sensor in the same package. So that's a pretty great engineer accomplishment. Now, one significant design change between the censored and the sensorless motors is the fact that Castle has gone away from the plastic cap over the motor leaves. And they now have this exposed connection. Now. Other motor vendors have been doing this for a long time, and I guess it's there's nothing wrong with that. I guess it works, but honestly, it just kind of makes me a little bit nervous. And that's just because, as you guys have probably seen from my channel, some of my cars are kind of tightly packed. And not that I have a lot of random metallic things just sitting around in there, but uh, that just makes me a little bit nervous. So I'm probably going to just coat all of my motors with just a, a little dab of liquid tape just to make sure that this is protected and insulated. And if I ever need to take these leads off or resolder or anything like that, then that, that stuff just peels right off. So that's no big deal. But yeah, I, I, I again, if you, I mean, in most cars, this probably isn't an issue and it's easy enough to fix just with either a piece of electrical tape or liquid tape or even hot glue. You know, but I just don't like having bare electrical um, connectors sitting around, but it's easy enough to remedy. 
but I mean, one of the things that this does do is just kind of demonstrate that the beefiness, the beefiness of these wires and the solidness of these connections. So, and then you can tell just kind of looking through. So these guys, this is for the A scale motors, this is 10 gauge wire. And for these Tim scale motors, you know, this is 12 gauge. But again, same type of thing. You see that you've got these uh, exposed electrical connections. And uh, like I said, it's not that big a deal, but you know, for me, I'm just paranoid. But like I said, easy enough to fix. Oh, one last little thing that is good to note with these censored motors is that just because it's a censored motor does not mean that you have to have a censored ESC to run it. The cool thing about these guys is that if you are just plugging these guys up to a standard ESC and you don't have a sensor, it'll run it. it the, the, the censored section is an additional capability, is not a requirement. So as you can see from the nice little included card, you could run a sensorless castle motor, sorry, a censored castle motor with a sensor-less ESC, and it will work just fine. So it just, it doesn't, the ESC doesn't even know that the sensor hardware is there. But if you do want to run it censored, you just need to have your extra sensor cable, and ta-da, it runs just fine. So this is a really nice little feature to give you extra flexibility. So just keep that in mind as you make your decision. So you can actually buy a censored motor which makes sense because Castle's selling them for the exact same price that they're selling them, uh, selling the sensor less counterparts for. And, um, well, actually, I take that back. You could buy the motor with, because it's essentially nearly the same price for the censored motor as the sensorless counterpart. So you can pick up a censored motor without a censored ESC just as an upgrade path. And then when you, this, when you decide to upgrade or not, then you have that capability. All right, guys. So keep tuned in the future or keep tuned in the very near future. You're going to see some run videos with these different motors, you know, in a variety of applications. And we're going to really put, put these guys through the ringer and see how these new 14 or how these new censored motors compare to their old sensorless counterparts and see if it's worth an upgrade all right guys stay tuned i hope you guys like this new series i hope you find it entertaining and informative and as always remember the mantra fly fix fly break it fix it and do all over again our house 21 signing out peace